All right, babe. The most beautiful podcast host in the world, co-host. Me. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Welcome back to our podcast that we do every once in a while. Um, we've had a big few weeks and it's exciting now to sit here and discuss how everything went with our wedding, our honeymoon, it, all of our family coming to Bali. We've been getting a lot of questions and um, I think this is a great opportunity for us to dive in and talk about it all. Are you excited? Very. So, <laughs> for everyone uh, that doesn't know the backstory, we have been planning our wedding for how many years? Oof. Uh, so, we got engaged 30, 30th or 31st of October 2018. Mm-hmm. And ever since we started planning we decided pretty quickly we wanted to get married in bali so say the first time we came over to bali and looked at locations was in end of 2018 yeah yeah it's been such a long time and planning a wedding is crazy in general and then we had covid come up and so we'd been planning for probably 18 months with our wedding planners here in Bali. We had the location picked out. All of our family had the invites. Most of them had booked flights. And then in March, 2020, our wedding was supposed to be in June. COVID happened. So we had to cancel it. Everyone had to cancel their flights. A lot of them like lost money. And it was just a a really horrible time. And I remember taking a video or a photo with you in the rain in Sumbakima yeah. and we spoke about, oh, how sad is this? That, you know, all everything that we planned just went down the drain and we're not the only ones. I know there would have been so many couples who went through that. And then we were like, okay, so we're just going to wait for a while now. Um, one year went past, still nothing. Two years went past, still nothing. And then finally in the third year, we had the confidence to sit down again and start planning and our wedding that eventually happened just recently was completely different to the wedding that we'd planned in the beginning can you talk a bit about that Mm -hmm. well the first time we planned our wedding in bali we knew we wanted to do it in bali because first of all it was a very special place to us i think it was like the place where we deeply fell in love with each other and the island And then, um, yeah, we just knew for your family it was close and all my family already told me we'd love to come. We've never been. So that was a great choice. But then we were planning the wedding the first time. And we were super, at that time, we were traveling to a new place every two weeks. So we had no time. We rushed it. We came from a job. I think we slept like four hours before looking at our first three locations. Mm -hmm. And... I remember we were like not even there, super tired, sleeping in between in the car. And we just chose one that felt quite good, which is funny, funny, but it's where we live now in Sese. Close. The place that we first chose for our wedding is is like two minutes that way. And it just felt great because it was a property with a lot of space. Our family could stay with us. And um, yeah, it was right at the beach, but it didn't mean anything to us in general like it didn't we didn't have a story behind it or it wasn't a special place to us but it felt good at that time and then obviously planning again we somehow started talking about why don't we make it super personal and have our wedding in our own two places i don't know about you but if i was to go back three years and think about how our wedding would have ended up back then i don't think it would have been anywhere near as special as special as personal as beautiful as what it turned out to be and i think those three years that we had in between during covid were really hard years but they were also the years where our relationship stood up and really got through those times and i don't know i was so confident going into our wedding this time that i was ready for that next step i wanted to marry you so bad (laughs) And three years ago, maybe I was still a bit young, a bit irresponsible. Our relationship was amazing, but it wasn't as mature as what it is now. I was going to say our life in general was very 
not stable N not our relationship our love but our life like we didn't know where we wanted to be we were traveling non-stop we rushed everything we literally rushed everything including our wedding mm. and now i feel like we were first thinking about getting married a year before but we opened our two boutique hotels in that year and we had massive projects and we just realized why do we always have to rush things like we like we already we were already kind of married in a way that we spent so much time together in the last seven years. But to take the time and really enjoy the process. And then for me, the most special part was our families met for the first time. They went to Bali for the first time ever. And to have like almost two weeks with our best friends and families here was just the, probably the best time we will ever have in Bali, to be honest. It was to, this morning I was a little bit depressed because everyone just left and it was just so magical. And I think it's so important to use your wedding if you're an international couple yep. like we are. The wedding is one big excuse for all of the family, for the sure. extended family to actually finally come together. And it might be the only time that our families come together like that ever again. And using the wedding as a reason to come together and for us not rushing it and waiting for that perfect moment, that was the best thing we ever did. Seeing everyone here in Bali meeting for the first time, I think that's really important. And for sure. like you said, we definitely were rushing the first time. And I think the best advice we could give uh, anyone, especially with, when it comes to a wedding, is Don't there rush. is really no rush. No. Um, it is just... A bit of paper in the end that now you're you're married um but if you can really enjoy the process like you said and make it special that first wedding that we planned was not us it was us going to a few vendors and saying yes we like this okay this place looks nice this one doesn't you know okay yeah. let's choose this but even bali didn't really feel like home for us at that time and this time around it was amazing it really felt like this is us we showed our family everything that we've done here in bali they got to meet our staff and i'm really happy with how it all turned out what was your <laughs> favorite part um no i was just before i'm talking about that can you say what you just said like a couple hours before to our friends like with your expectations and reality oh uh, yeah yeah so happiness I've, i heard this in a podcast somewhere happiness is when reality exceeds expectations and you become depressed when your expectations are higher than the reality and coming into our wedding and our honeymoon and our families and that coming together i had pretty high expectations but the reality exceeded my expectations it was the best week best two weeks of my life by far and everything just went so amazingly and all of that planning all of that preparation paid off in the end and it was so good that people got to see it um, that our families and friends were there with us feeling the emotion it was it was probably the most emotional i've been ever at that wedding like when you were coming down the the aisle i think um for all of the guys listening here they got like a sneak peek of everything that happened so maybe you can we can give like a full rundown of exactly like the whole wedding um, process yeah. so first of all i want to say to all the future brides it's definitely stressful and i feel like on social media and online you don't get to see that before at least i didn't realize how stressful it can be and how sick you feel a couple of days before just because there's just so much pressure doing a, a destination wedding as well the expectations every single person has for themselves for that trip um, but the best advice that I got from friends and family was to really just enjoy it yourself and and don't really worry about little things. Um, and I think that's what I did. I, I had to drop my expectations a week before because you left for your Bucks party to Australia. And I was here by myself and I... I think the last seven to 10 days before the wedding, I got quite sick. I had a bad cold. Mm. And that's when I realized, okay, my body just wants me to give up, relax and not care. And that's what I did. And then I like slowly got into wedding wives. And the first day we started in the old destination where we would have got married in 2020 in Sese at the beach. And it was amazing. And I feel like the moment we arrived, I knew okay from from now on i just feel and enjoy 
and I was already so happy about the first day. It was so beautiful and personal. Um, it was 26 of our closest family members for a dinner to get everyone together before we had the pre-dinner the next day with everyone who was invited. And I already said to Jake, if it's now pouring for the next few days, which we looked at the weather and it was supposed to, I was like, I'm already happy because this is already, the setup was as beautiful as our wedding. Yeah. So our first pre, pre-wedding pre <laughs> dinner was day at one. Sese Beach Villas in Sese Beach. And our wedding planners, uh, Kylie and Narelle from Global Weddings. Um, and how do you say uh, Kylie's design company? Oh, I, we have to put it in a... Inoki d- Creative? Yeah, something like that. I think yeah. that's how it is. Yeah. They're, they're absolutely amazing. That first day, they created this beachfront long table for all of our family, fairy lights, um, a little bar, umbrellas. It was so, so nice. And like you said, that was the same for me. I was at that point like, okay, cool. You know, even if everything goes to crap <laughs> now, that was a really nice dinner with all we, of our yeah. family. And we had a perfect sunset. The dinner was amazing. It was sharing plates and yeah. everyone, I, f- I feel like the, obviously everything was pretty, but the people made it. I didn't expect everyone to get along, to have such a good time, to love it. That was the special part. And because we now live in Sese Beach or in Sese, that was really special to us because it was literally two minutes from our new house and the dogs were there and it was just really beautiful. So then the second night was the pre-dinner. Second morning. Second morning, sorry. Um, (laughs) We actually did a Bali ceremony. That was super special. We again, as I at least, didn't have any expectations because we just told our um, beautiful Bali team and our Bali friends we wanted to have like a little blessing from the island and do something traditional. And we, I didn't know how this would look like, and it ended up being the most beautiful setup at a temple in that villa where we had the pre dinner the night before. And they brought in a local priest and he was doing like these um, different rituals with us. We wore the traditional clothes and our family was watching and our dogs were watching and our entire Bali team and our Bali friends were watching. And it was just so amazing. That felt like magic that because in Bali, they're always doing ceremonies to bless the land if you're doing a new project or a building. And also for a couple coming together, blessing the marriage. And so to have that blessing here in Bali with all of our um, Balinese team was um, very, very special. So, yeah, that was at 10 in the morning. And then at 11, to top that morning off, we asked our amazing friends to do a little breathwork session together. Oh. It's called Mandala Breathwork. And what you do is you sit in two circles. So the one circle faces the other circle. And then you rotate one of the circles. So you're always facing a different person and you breathe together. It sounds maybe a bit odd if you haven't done it, but what it does is you have a really deep connection to that person across you because you're staring into each other's eyes for like two minutes and you're longer connecting five minutes. And we did this with you must you must imagine it was us, our friends, but then also our like cousins, our Step-mom, grandma, your grandma. grandma. And it got so emotional and everyone afterwards was like so loving and saying like, we love you so much. We need to spend more time together. I don't know if many of the people who have uh, listening to this would have done a breathwork session, like a proper breathwork session. But coming from me, like a country boy from Australia, the first time I did breathwork, I was like, that was the most insane crazy life-changing experience i've ever had can you maybe explain it in like a couple sentences what it does well i've never done ayahuasca but from the stories that i hear about that it felt like that i had like an outer body experience um i was cramping in all of my uh, hands and arms and i felt like this tension was being released from my body and uh and then i had all these recollections of my childhood things that i'd never thought about before um my relationship with my dad all of these things came up i actually i went through a a, in my first breathwork session a really intense recollection of like my parents getting divorced and how i kind of held that against my dad for ages and then i sent him a message after the breathwork and i said i'm so happy that you're my dad and i i'm i just really glad 
with everything the way it happened and it was nothing was ever your fault and uh i just want you to know that i love you and i don't know it just came out of my heart and then my dad replied and he said that was that was the best thing i've ever heard in my life Aww. crying smiley and so that that's kind of like what breathwork did and then in this session we did I was, I've never seen my brother cry like this before. Your we grandma, cried together, my grandma. grandma. And ever since then, I was like, especially for weddings, when you're bringing the closest people around you, the people that you love, this should be a thing. People should do like a family breath work before the wedding because we were so close after that. Everyone who was we in that breath work, there was like 16 of us and we were all just on another level. Yeah. And so if you haven't tried breathwork, look up mandala breathwork. It sounds crazy. You have to look into somebody's eyes for five minutes straight and breathe together. And it's very uncomfortable if you're not used to it. And you all you want to do is look away. But if you hold it, you can get incredible results. In, yeah, incredible experiences. Um, yeah, so that was only the second morning and then at night uh, we had our proper pre-dinner with everyone i think we were around 80 to 85 people at the yeah. wedding and we were thinking about this a lot where did we want to do it how should it look like and we decided it would be the place where we take our um, dogs every single morning it's called times were wrong it's a little cute place right at the beach with some bean bags you watch the surfers and yeah we did that for a sunset we gave a dress code everyone came in white um, i think a lot of people didn't wear shoes we were barefoot um, brought our dogs it was absolutely amazing it felt so special because everyone was like a little family like even just look wise because we were all like looking like a community together in our white clothes that's a big tip for anybody yeah. doing a wedding girls out there planning <laughs> your weddings or guy if you're planning and you want to capture like a beautiful content that goes with the wedding and it's not all about the content but if there's a dress code that everyone has to wear the same it really we were like our own group and everyone fit in and it, it looks really great i would recommend that to everyone make sure you have a dress code so yeah we had three lines of um, low tables in the sand and cushions everywhere and candles and the sunset and it was super intimate and a great way to start everyone got to know each other and i think that was also a special part of our family because no one really knew each other even family uh, and friendship groups didn't didn't know each other that well and afterwards everyone was like a big family they always continued to have dinners after our wedding and that was great so yeah that was the night before the wedding and by this time <laughs> i have to say because kylie and narelle our wedding planners they were setting everything up yeah. coming in i was a little bit nervous like oh, i hope everything's going to be good by this time i was like okay these guys know what they're doing like i can trust it because those first two nights exceeded my expectations so so much and like, then i, I knew was like blown oh, away as well what is the actual wedding gonna yeah. be like if these were the first just dinners yeah and then the moment of the wedding so that night we slept in two different villas mm -hmm. my sister stayed with me you slept by yourself mm -hmm. and i was so nervous and so i had so many ma amazing moments already in my head that i couldn't sleep that night my sister was like you need to go to bed and i was like i can't uh, and the next morning we had breakfast together and then we already went to Maja, our first white boutique hotel where I got ready with my four bridesmaids, which was my sister, um, my oldest, longest friend, Selena, my sister-in-law, the girlfriend of my brother and Raquel, uh, who you all know. And yeah, that's when I got really nervous. Yeah, I was with the guys not nervous we were having beers <laughs> um, my dad and my brothers just getting ready at Bella Jar which is our other hotel and for all of you guys that don't know um, we have two hotels here in Bali um, Maja Changu and Bella Jar and they're kind of like 80 meters from each other yeah. and when we were planning our wedding this time around we were like how cool would it be if we could do this in our own locations in our own Super hotels intimate. and show all of our family and friends what we've built but also just see what we could do with these spaces that we created and i was so nervous thinking about whether we'd be able to pull it off or not and if it would look good and in the end i couldn't believe it the video that we made um, in bella jar of us seeing oh, the wow. setup for the first time i think got 13 million views on instagram and that just shows how beautiful that location was with the setup so 
couldn't I couldn't believe it at all. But my favorite, my favorite moment, because you asked me yeah. in the beginning, was literally when they held the curtains closed. You were standing. My brother was waiting for me because he walked me down the aisle because my dad is not there anymore. Um, and like when they opened the curtains, I was shaking and I just stood there and I couldn't walk. And I looked at everyone and my brother was crying looking at me you were crying it was the most emotional moment ever i was like a puddle up the top <laughs> because when i walked down i was out there by myself for maybe two minutes and it was quiet and there was just a violin playing in everyone was looking at me and i remember just an overwhelming feeling of like this is it this is finally what we have been planning coming all of our most loved friends and family sitting around and I was like tears started coming even before you came out because I was like this is this is the moment and I had to look down and breathe a couple of times just to catch myself and then when it opened and you were there and you were crying I was like I'm done I'm, I'm so done I was already crying behind the girl so they're like you can't cry yet like your makeup and I was like I can't but yeah it was so emotional even like talking to our friends and family afterwards we had like Jamie who's like a really tough friend of ours who never cried in front of his girlfriend. And he said, I cried. So it must have been, even for people that weren't us, it was a very emotional and just amazing moment. Yeah, I will remember that for the rest of my life. And that was that just creating it so intimately uh, and small. I think that's what did that. Um, we had everyone really close and around us, yeah. around the pool. The aisle yeah. went straight down the middle of the pool and I could feel the energy from everybody around and that was that's really felt amazing. And uh, I decided last minute with Kylie to um, do like a setup that's not usual because normally you face the chairs towards us when we're standing there where we would um, face them sideways towards the aisle and I felt like that was also special because everyone was sitting front row pretty Bang. much or second row yeah um, that was amazing and a couple tips that I wanted to give in that moment here is number one we took away all the phones because we didn't want people to watch it through the phones and then you know not be in the moment and then secondly we did decide to have amazing content creators and photographers, videographers to have the content for ourselves. And even if you're not in the industry that we're in, I highly recommend this. It's just money so well spent because you can live through this every single time you're watching the video. I was this morning, I showed you, I was like, I'm watching our videos. I think I've watched them 200 times because it brings me back to that moment. Do you know what I was scared about <laughs> what? going into the wedding? What? That it was just gonna all be about content. Yeah. I know that we're on Instagram, of yeah. course, and that's what we do for a living. And to be honest, coming in, I was like, I just hope that it's not gonna be all about that. Yeah. And the balance between me feeling it and being Same. there and then trying to capture the content was going to be like more content less feel um in hindsight looking back now i was like i didn't even know the cameras were there and it's such and a good job, what yeah. was great was that we didn't plan anything in particular yeah we were thinking about it we were going to be like okay what's trending what's like some wedding content that we yeah. can create where we have to set this up and do this and yeah. do that and create trends and then in the end, we just decided, let's just live it. Let's be there. Let's, you know, feel the emotion and feel the experience. And whatever they capture, they capture. Yeah. And that was incredible. And everything yeah. that we posted in the end or every bit of content that we got was just me and you with our friends and family and each other enjoying the moments. And I think that's what was so beautiful. And I... Yeah was so happy just to be like okay great you know the content was just capturing the moment that was it and we had enough people there to make sure that they got the good angles and they were all around me and you didn't have to worry about it and also not like be on our phones right away as well i mm. remember raquel as her wedding gift said i will post your first photo so you can completely let go and i was like that would be amazing and the next i think week i only posted a, f a content that 
I got given by our amazing content creators. Paulina and Sergi. We have to say a big uh, shout out to, to Paulina and Sergi, Maddie and Dan, Sarah, the team, dear Vincent. Like they all did such an amazing job. Yeah. And it was just for me the best to not have to worry about anything. I've been like the last two to three weeks so into my, in my love bubble with you and everything. Mm. So that was amazing. And then obviously the last thing that I loved so much is after we had the ceremony in this white place, because I always imagined to be a white bride in a white location in like Greece or something and we had that in our ho own hotel to then move everyone over into this incredible fairy tale land that was more like jungle vibes moodier with those amazing chandeliers it looked I, I didn't even expect it to be that amazing like the girls did an incredible job and then we had the perfect balance between emotions per, like keeping everything personal and so authentic and then also afterwards a crazy party yeah the, the party ended up <laughs> being probably my not my favorite part i was gonna say the, what <laughs> the part where we got to say i do and you walked down and just me seeing you my wife and that was the most emotional and the best part but i love how our wedding went through stages where yeah. the two dinners before was very tame everyone's getting to know each other yeah. having a couple drinks and and then the wedding was so beautiful and emotional and we had the breath work the day before and then afterwards people really let go let their hair down as well the fireball came out <laughs> and we were Whiskey. slipping around on the floor ended up in the pool and like seeing my cousin aaron who's <laughs> usually in his shell doing the worm on the floor that was for me just the perfect cap to an amazing wedding where we actually really got to enjoy ourselves as well my suit is ruined but <laughs> but like even it. our moms were dancing with our friends like and everyone was so connected it was amazing my advice for that would be get yourself a hype man <laughs> like Lockie, my best my best man Uh, he was like at a good level from like 7 p.m. and he was the one who lifted everybody to his level. Plus having a few days before, like I can highly recommend if you're thinking about a destination wedding, do it because everyone is like Holiday becoming mode. so much closer the few days before whether like it was family and friends, all of them. And if you do wedding at home, I've often seen it that obviously you come from work, you go to the wedding, the next day you go to work again or whatever. So like we were really like celebrating for a whole week with everyone. And that was really special. And yeah, we, we had the most amazing night. And then the next day we decided we wanted to just hang out with everyone and do, do like a little beach, not beach, a pool party at Maja. Mm -hmm. And again, the girls, Kylie and Norell did amazing. Yeah, recovery day. And we actually had drips there. We had <laughs> like vitamin drips um, from the dose to make sure that we were like getting a good uh, recovery after the hangover. I was actually okay. Yeah. But yeah, it was fun. We were just hanging at the pool some including us played drinking games <laughs> again and that was basically it after yeah. that we were with family i think what we should do to just give some value here is um just reel off some of the vendors that we use because everything was amazing and we I can share it in the description yeah as well. let's do that in the description um so you can just go over it because everyone was like truly amazing yeah really like from the tipsy taps for the cocktails and then like the flowers floral sand at floral I'm, i wasn't involved in everything uh, so i don't know was, the names of he everything. was brilliant as the well. dj danny was incredible Mindful Munchies, our favorite uh, desserts. The cake, oh my God. Yeah, Ariel. Yeah, we'll link all of that in the description because if uh, any of you guys are considering doing a Bali wedding, we definitely did our research and we made sure that we got the best of the best. And in the end, it turned out just like, I, I can't even imagine it being better. Next year again. <laughs> yeah, we do an anniversary every year, anniversary destination wedding in Bali. All right, I think that was it, our wedding. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to send us a DM on Instagram or also comment underneath this, which would make it even easier. And I would like to overlay some of the videos and things onto this uh, podcast. So Riley's going to have a little bit of extra work. <laughs> Sorry, Riley. Um, just so that you guys can really understand like the moments that we spoke about in this podcast, because I think um, then you'll really get a feel for it. But yeah, thanks for listening, guys. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.